So in verse 2, if you still got your Bible open, Paul wrote, My purpose is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Now as we start this, I want to make sure that we see that Paul wasn't calling the struggle the things that were happening to him, but how he lived in the midst of those things. The struggle was not the circumstances, the struggle was his character in those circumstances. Now a lot of us turn all of our attention to the circumstances and we abandon the character that God's trying to build in us and we keep wondering when God is going to fix this thing, when this thing is how God wants to work in us. And so there's too much attention that we pay to the stuff going on around us when God is doing everything to shine a bright light on everything that's going on within us. And so the struggle is not the hard things in life. The struggle is the hard heart that I live with that the things in life constantly reveals and I keep denying. Right? Isn't it so often that we keep repeating cycles and wondering, why does this keep happening to me? Let me ask this. Did you change the last time you went through it? Because if we keep responding the same way, he has to keep doing the same thing. Because he's working to change us, not to change things for us. In the middle of difficulty, Paul continued. He stayed faithful. He put his hand in the plow and didn't look back, as Jesus said in Luke 9, 62. What did Jesus say? That if you do look back, you're not worthy of it. Right? Like, Jesus says hard things that we soften, and yet Jesus said anyone who puts his hand in the plow and, does, and, and looks back, or anyone who doesn't put his hand in the plow and keep going, he's not worthy of me. And yet, how often do we say, this is going to be good, and as soon as it's not good, we start looking for something else? Right? I do it all the time, far too regularly. I get excited about something, and when it doesn't feel the way I thought it was going to feel, or go the way I thought it was going to go, or get applauded the way I hoped it would get applauded, I suddenly go, what else can we do? What's the next thing that we can do? How will this work better for me? When God's so often working in us and working through us because he's already promised to be for us. There's a point where if I'm going to believe his promises, I'm going to have to live in his purposes. Or if I'm going to believe that he is for me, I'm going to have to live for him and trust that he will be for me no matter what goes on. 